11, this is Houston. Uh, would you care to comment on some of these craters as we go by? Uh, Roger, we're uh, approaching uh, the uh, approach path to uh, ignition. Uh, this is equivalent to uh, 13 minutes before ignition, and uh, we're at about 80 degrees east, I guess. 83 degrees east. Would that correspond to uh, location you're holding in uh, present time? Uh, Roger, we're showing your present position is about uh, 77, 76 degrees east, uh, looking back towards the east. Hey, you should be looking back at my Z now. Uh, Roger. Okay, yeah. All right, Houston, uh, what you're seeing in the middle of the uh, screen now is the uh, crater Schubert. And uh, Gilbert U is uh, in the center right now. And this comes up at about uh, a little over 12 minutes before uh, power descent. We'd, instead, of be looking, instead of looking back at it, we'd be looking straight down at it at that time. Roger. And we show you an altitude now of about uh, 110 miles. And of course, you'd be considerably lower at the initiation of power descent. Okay, Houston, look at uh, register three on the disk key, uh, theta. Uh, theta is increasing toward my uh, desire to 315, and I'll let the hand controller alone here, and I'll bet you it reverses itself. Uh, Roger 11, we're watching the disky now, and uh, still coming in beautifully on the TV. Generally 
Generally speaking, the uh, tendency seems to be to pull the limb down toward uh, uh, the center of the moon as in a gravity gradient experiment. Uh, Roger, 11, we copy. Well, it may have something to do with mass kinds, or it may... Uh, Roger, we've got... Uh, it may have something to do with mass kinds, or it may just be the peculiarity of the disky display. Okay, we've observed the behavior of your disky. Uh, I think we've got the data here to work on it. Uh, let us grind around a little while on it, and we'll report back to you uh, uh, probably in a rev or two. Okay, well, in the meantime, I'm going to pitch down uh, toward 315. Roger. Three craters, three horizontal craters that uh, you now have in the field of view are uh, immediately underneath the ground track. The right hand and the largest crater that you see is Dubiago uh, P. Uh, Roger, we concur on the identification of that crater. We show you coming up on uh, landmark Alpha 1 here shortly. Roger, uh, Mike's having his first look at Alpha 1 at the present time. Yeah, there's a great uh, bright crater. It's not a large one, but an extremely bright one. It looks like a very uh, recent, and I would guess, impact crater with uh, rays streaming out in all directions, which uh, should make uh, my uh, correction of foaming sea easy to see coming up on it. Now, uh, Crater Camp is one of the smaller ones out on the uh, on the floor of the foaming sea. Okay, we show you uh, over the, the Sea of Fertility now, and uh, you ought to have Langrenus uh, down south of the track a few degrees, about uh, nine degrees south of the track. Yeah, the crater that's in the center of the screen now is uh, Webb. Uh, we'd be looking straight down on it at about six minutes before power descent. It uh, has a relatively flat bottom uh, to the crater, and you can see maybe uh, two or three uh, craters that are in the bottom of it. On the uh, western wall, the wall that's now nearest to, to the uh, camera or near the bottom of the screen, we can see uh, a dimpled crater just on the outside. And then coming back toward the bottom of the screen and to the left, you can see uh, a series of uh, depressions. Uh, it's this type of uh, connected craters that uh, give us most uh, interest to uh, discover why they're in uh, the particular patterns that they're in. I'll zoom the camera in uh, and try and give you a little closer look at this. Roger, we're uh, observing the Dimple Crater now. Uh, the central peak that we can see on the orbiter photos doesn't seem to stand out very well here. Well, they're not central peaks, they're uh, depressions in the center. Right. And you'll notice on the uh, pitch thruster activity, I still I put in uh, oh, a dozen uh, minimum impulses and pitched down, uh, and I'm still far from correcting back to 315. We're moving the camera over to the uh, right window now to give you uh, language. It's, uh, it's uh, several central peaks. And, uh, Roger. Uh, we got Langrenus in our screen now. Okay, 
Okay, Levin, this is Houston. Uh, we're getting a beautiful picture of uh, Langrenus now with its uh, rather conspicuous central peak. Sea of fertility doesn't look very fertile to me. I don't know who named it. Well, it may have been named by uh, a gentleman whom this crater was named after, Langrenus. Langrenus was a cartographer to the King of Spain and uh, made one of the one of the early reasonably accurate maps of uh, the moon. Roger, that's uh, very interesting. I'll have to admit it north. sounds better for our purposes than the Sea of Crises. <laughs> Amen to that. Okay, it looks like you're coming inside now on the camera. Well, I can't get behind to see the monitor. I'll uh, bring the focus in, but we're going to be looking down past uh, one of the LAM quads, and uh, one of the antennas almost straight down at the uh, ground track that we'll be seeing coming in. Now, I guess this is maybe two or three minutes before the power descent. All right, that should put the uh, LEM structure about in focus. Now I'm going to uh, move it out to infinity and then uh, expand the field of view. Crater Stecky is out my window now, window number two. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Uh, we uh, show you coming up on the Terminator at uh, 78.53, about seven minutes from now. And uh, we've also got the uh, LOI-2 and TEI-5 pads ready for you uh, after the TV, uh, whenever you want to terminate over. Roger. And uh, we're getting a good view of the track leading into the landing site now. Okay, it looks like uh, we got Secchi K to buy about uh, 10 seconds ago coming up on Apollo Ridge. And in the right-hand portion of our screen right now, we can see Messier, Alpha, and Bravo with uh, the light-colored rays uh, streaming off in one direction. but in the uh, Sea of Fertility, there are a number of uh, crater, craters that are just barely discernible, old, old craters whose uh, outlines are just barely able to be seen. Roger, I think we can make them out. Uh, the color uh, really enhances our ability to discern features and craters uh, over what we uh, see in real time on our black and white monitor. Right. The, at, at these low sun angles, there's no trace of brown. It's uh, now returned to a, a very uh, gray appearance, and uh, like uh, the acre says, it has a look of uh, plaster of Paris to it at this sun angle, which uh, is completely lacking at, at higher sun angles. Roger. Okay, this is uh, very close.
approach the ignition point for power defense, uh, just passing Mount Maryland, that's uh, a triangular shaped mountain that you see in the uh, center of the screen at the present time with the crater Seki Seda uh, on top of the far northern edge of the mountain. Roger, we're getting a good view of Mount Maryland and of Seki Seda.